Bootleg Transformers that, that, that are literally so bad, I literally died. They're not good. This is a bootleg of the One Step Turbo Changer. It is very kibble heavy. The front of the truck mode is just a backpack. Weird symbol at the top, probably for the company. And this color of brown looks absolutely terrible. The front of this just kind of looks like a shield. It's not very aesthetic. I guess what little paint application on him is just fine, I guess. He does have the classic flames that the Bayverse Optimus Prime has. Some red over here, some silver bits on the legs, and some more silver at the back. The head sculpt on the figure looks really bad. He's got very angy eyes. The head is very hollow, similar to my head. The chest piece is incredibly bulky. There is a decent amount of detail on it, but it being very big kind of ruins the figure. A bit of sculpt work on the arms. You can see some tiny bits of detail. Further down the legs, they're molded uh, like legs. The wheels are very big out on the sides. In terms of articulation, the head can spin all the way around. Looks like you get an arm rotation. Can't go out. No elbow bend. No hand rotation. Legs can't really move either. No rotation on the legs. Feet can't move. A look at the back of the figure. It is so many hollow bits. The feet, the legs, the arms. To transform this figure, all you really need to do is uh, just do that and kind of adjust it into place. And yeah, here's the vehicle mode. And you might think to yourself, but Mecha Z, the, the arms are sticking out at the back. And uh, yeah, that, that's how it is. Even the original figure was like that. So <laughs> this is also supposed to tab in, but it just does not. This also just sticks out and it looks really bad. The front of the truck kind of reminds me of that truck from Cars. Doesn't roll. The fuel tanks are so high up and this entire spot just seems empty. This is, uh, this is really bad which which kind of sucks because optimus prime he was he was kind of a chill guy he would like murder people and stuff on to the next figure here's a ravager figure that's actually a flash drive this is a 64 gigabyte flash drive and it does work i have tested it the decepticon insignia at the top is smudged off which kind of sucks he has some red eyes and very minimal detail throughout him which is fine this mouthpiece is very loose but overall it is a pretty cool thing to have all the legs pretty much have the same points of articulation it can move from here here and the feet can move back of the legs can move here hinge joint over there there, here, and once again on the feet. This tail can also move for the transformation. And speaking of the transformation, first let's straighten out all the legs as much as we can. Split his ass in half, bringing both pieces out to the side. Bring this forward, same with this. Now rotate that back, same with this one, and flip this over. The f I mean, flip it over the other way, you didn't see that. Slide this out, slide it out, please slide out. Come on, there we go. And here is the USB flash drive mode. This compacts pretty well. This is a copy of the device label Ravage. This is probably better tech-wise because it's USB 3.0, but build quality wise, it falls a little flat, but you know, since it's, it's, it's really cheap, so I think it's worth it. It's kind of cool. Hey there, my silly geese. That's you, the audience. I'm going to be honest. Um, this is more of a compilation of older videos with some newer stuff sprinkled in throughout. You lazy piece of shit. This is a uh, fridge son, by the way. He's here to heckle me. I apologize if this is annoying. I just kind of need a break sometimes from this capitalistic society. And so I can focus on other videos. Also, this mic isn't attached or anything. I'm just kind of holding it to feel less awkward about myself and now I feel more awkward pointing that out. Uh, so anyways, this video is the bootleg Optimus Prime pen video, but I was kind of cringing at it, so I redid the entire audio for this video and made it a bit shorter. Also, I apologize for my nails. This is a knockoff Transformers pen. There is an official version of this, but you can obviously tell this one is a bootleg, especially with words like cool design, cool style, random wireframe hand. And back here, you have stolen artwork of the actual product. On the top, you have the Autobot insignia, which is interesting because usually knockoff companies try to stay away from using official logos. Now, now let's open it up. That was surprisingly easy. Here's the figure and it looks like the head just does not want to come out. It's a little shy. Don't worry, we all have performance anxiety, which is why I barely do streams. The anxiety also prevents you from talking to women. Anyways, moving on. Now compared to the actual box art, as you can see, they look nothing alike. Now let's take a closer look at the head and as you can see, it's super poorly designed. It tries to resemble Optimus, but it fails to do so miserably. If you notice the smokestacks are a different color as well as the skirt pieces, the legs and feet look about the same. Most of the figure is inaccurate. It's terrible. It's really bad. This could be a starting point for a good custom, maybe? If you put the head in like this, we can sort of get it to stick out more. It's still pretty terrible though. The chest piece just doesn't tab into place, so it's constantly loose. The figure comes with a shield, the ion blaster, a sword, another blaster, and another blaster again, another weapon, and another weapon. The numerous accessories are of decent quality, so that's good. You could totally paint these and make them look even better. And honestly, it goes well with entry gate and high grade Gundam kits. The figure can actually hold its accessories, so that's a plus, I guess. And let's see if the shield actually fits. Okay, that's good. This thing comes with no instructions, so I'm not entirely sure how to transform it. I assume these are supposed to come out. Oh. <laughs> Please kill me. Okay, we can just put it back on. So let's look at the actual picture to see if we can figure out how to transform this thing. So yeah, bring these out on both sides. Now I think bring out the feet and rotate them and now combine the legs and I can't get them to snap together. I'm assuming this goes all the way up there. 
Uh, we'll leave that out for now. Now I think fold in both of these arms. Actually, let's put the head back in now. Fiddle with this until it all goes in properly. And yeah, here's the pen mode, I guess. It looks awful and the legs still won't snap in. I think these are supposed to go up and no, I broke that. Whoops. I think I was supposed to do it like that. Okay. This thing sucks. Now the ink cartridges are supposed to be in here. Let's see. And it's flying everywhere. Let's test the ink real quick. So on the official release, the ink cartridge is supposed to go in one of the blasters, I think, but apparently not for the bootleg. That's close enough. Let's see if this works and it went back in the pen. Looks like it does work though. All right, let's bring him back into robot mode for articulation. The arms can move a full three. The arms can move a full 360 degrees. An elbow bend, the hands can barely move. You do get an arm. Huh, pretend that never happened. The arm here can also rotate. We're just gonna skip that one. The head can spin a full 360 degrees. It can look up and down and around. Legs can only go out that far. They can go up that high and back all the way there. And the feet are on ball joints. This figure is garbage. These next ones are bootlegs of the 2007 Legends Transformers figures. Enjoy. You get a bootleg Bumblebee, but it looks like the actual character's name is Looker. Rhymes with a very poorly looking Optimus Prime. His name is Infinite. Similar to the suffering you'll go through if you don't leave a like on this video. The Mecha Z Tribunal is always watching. Ratchet, known as as Dr. Moo. The reason it's funny is because they just threw the word doctor in there because he's a medical guy and I feel like that's kind of a lazy name. At least it's not just the word doctor on its own. Jazz, who's named Glance. Barricade, who's named Guard. And Blackout, which they named Storm. I like how all the other character names are kind of like a simple word that don't really relate to the figure except for Dr. Moo here. Now the front of the packaging for all of them is the same. It says Alteration Man, 2-in-1, Choking Hazard, Machine Boy, which I guess is the name of the company. Company, and they all come with instructions on the back here and you get a little Ashens reference. Also here are his stats if anyone cares. I don't. So we'll start with Glance first here. I guess you could say we'll be taking a glance at him. <laughs> Now there's no point in trying to save the packaging on these. These are not collector's items. So it is acceptable to disrespect the packaging. Oh, come on. I like how they're actually held in place with a wire. Wow, this is getting messy here. Here's a quick look at Jazz or Glance. Now straight out of the packaging, this does not hold in place very well. Which is fitting considering he gets ripped in half in the movie. And the figure itself feels cheap, but not as cheap as I expected. And the design on this is not too bad. The head sculpt is pretty good, honestly. The legs being pretty much the entire front of the car look kind of weird though. Here's a look at the back. Now posability wise, there's no head movement. The arms can spin all the way around and they can move a little bit like that. You got ab movement. The legs can split out like that. They can go up like that and back like that and they can twist. He has some grill detail on the front and some detail on the hands as well. And honestly the blue visor does look really nice. But you got some horrible looking marks there. Now to transform this you bring this up. Bring his feet in. Turn his feet around, snap him in place, bring the arms up. The legs are supposed to go all the way up, but it seems to be stuck in place. And then this is super loose. Also, another thing I noticed is that this is a faux front piece. The car front piece is actually like this. This kind of just goes up at the top like that. It's like that on the actual figure too. Honestly, this is the best I can get it to transform. And yeah, I'm not gonna really bother spending any more time on this one. Back to Bumblebee or Looker. Here are his stats. And I also just noticed they spelled transformation wrong. It says Transformarion. Here's a look at the inside artwork if anyone cares, I don't. And here is Looker and despite his name, he is not a Looker. The head sculpt looks very generic. You got his grill on the front here with some silver paint. The color of the blue eyes though is pretty good. The arms are on a ball joint so they can move around like that. And then you have whatever this kind of movement is. Legs are on a ball joint as well. No knee movement. I'm assuming all of these have pretty much the same type of articulation, so I'm not really gonna spend too much time on it. On the bottom here, you have some horrible marks. The figure itself has some detail at the bottom and some panel work right here. Here's a look at the back. Let's see if this one actually transforms. For here, you just pull the legs down and then snap them together, straighten this out. And then yeah, it kind of just goes together in place. It is supposed to snap in like that, but like it's not really gonna stay in place. Here's a look at the front. You can see his hands. The underneath. The wheels roll on this one. On the Jazz one, they were kind of tight. That's what she- Come. Next up, we'll do a Decepticon. Here are his stats, and here's Blackout. And I was a little careless on this one when opening it, but it doesn't really matter. What really matters is you, and you pressing that subscribe button. So the arms and legs are on a ball joint, but the arms are really just kind of stuck in a T-pose like that, and you can't really bring him around. This one does have some extra articulation. The knees are on a ball joint. The head sculpt on this one doesn't look too bad. He's got red eyes, so you know he's evil. A bit of detail work on the chest. Here's a look at the back. Oh, geez, ew. 
It, it's got some disgusting gunk on there. That's gross. And to transform this, I assume it's fairly simple. Looks like you gotta flip this over. Same for the other side. Get everything to line up in there. Then bring these in. And then bring the blades around. It's a bit tight and can't really spin around very well. This right here is also tight and can't really spin very well. This bottom side didn't really snap into place properly. But the vehicle mode on this one doesn't look too bad, honestly. This kind of feels like a nice little mini con. You got some pretty decent silver paint on here. And the blue color doesn't look too bad either. This is the best vehicle mode so far besides some mysterious substance. Next is Alteration Man Dr. Moo. Here's his stats. This one's a lot glossier than the others, and it looks like it has a lot more detail than them. The hands look kind of off though, and the head sculpt looks kind of like a lion. The head sculpt on this is pretty bad, but the rest of the figure doesn't look too bad. This is pretty loose right here, I'm assuming it is for the transformation. Here's the back of the figure. Comes with an extra tire that does spin. Now for articulation, this one seems like it's got some butterfly joints. Looks like if you move this, the legs can move out, and it looks like they can only move side to side. And there is foot movement. Now detail wise, this is probably one of the better looking ones so far, minus whatever that head is. For transformation, bring in these arms, and they tab into place. Then it looks like you bring this around, and bring these into place. And then you can just line that up. Now the vehicle mode on this one is pretty good. I feel like if you saw this one in vehicle mode, it might pass as an actual authentic transformer figure. Now for barricade, or guard, here's his stats. Now this one doesn't look too bad for a bootleg. It looks like it resembles the original Legends figure quite well. Here's another barricade figure that came out at the time. Here's the side and the back. The head sculpt is still off though. You got his grill on the front, police on the side. Wheels are kind of tight on this. The arms are on a ball joint and and it has a butterfly joint right here. Ball joints on the legs, and the knees can bend, and the head can move up and down. Now for transformation, just bring that head down, bring this over, align these up, and then bring the arms into place. And yeah, that's good enough. You have this here, which kind of blocks it from going in all the way. We can cut this off. I'm not using my god hands on these. Here, now we can put that on. Yeah, and that fits better in place. I'm not gonna worry about the other one. Oh, and I forgot, bring this up. Yeah, the vehicle mode on this looks all right. Doesn't roll well. None of these really roll very well. Here's the bottom, and he's staring at you. It holds together in place pretty well. This is kind of loose. Now we have Optimus, also known as Infinite. Here's his stats. Here is the figure, and this probably is one of the worst looking ones out of all of them. The head sculpt doesn't even have eyes. So he is a prime target for the eye people. That pun was intentional. The general design of the figure is pretty bad. Here's the back, and it's very hollowed out. The arm can move all the way around. I guess the legs get in the way, and then they can move back and forth. The legs are on a ball joint here, but they can only really move back and forth. They can't really move out because of how it's designed. And we can compare it with an Optimus figure I have from one of the movies. And yeah, they don't really look anything alike. Now, I'm gonna guess on how to transform this, which I've been kind of doing with a few of them. I'm guessing bring this around, and then up in a place like that, and then peg it in place. And then it looks like you bring this over like that. And it looks like this one's also got some nubs here. I'm I'm not gonna bother with that. The trailer piece here looks pretty small. The vehicle mode on this one doesn't look too great either. Here's the front, doesn't really hold in place very well. Here's the bottom. However, I will say with this one, if you were to look at it from all around, you couldn't really tell it was a transforming figure. Oh, wow, that was that was a wild ride. I don't remember anything about the video. I I, I didn't rewatch it. Let's take a look at this Grimlock figure though. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> he evolved into a chicken. He's got a lot of nice mechanical armor details on him, I guess, uh, but he doesn't look very good. This part kind of looks like a xenomorph or perhaps a penis. He has a huge underbite and the rest of the face doesn't look very good in my opinion. It looks very derpy. I guess that makes sense for Grimlock. Grimlock stupid. That's probably true. You can do this with his mouth. Articulation wise, nothing else can move here. And then how would you transform this guy? Uh... There we go. Yeah, that, that, that was it. The head sculpt, uh, that looks bad. The rest of the figure looks bad. Not a whole lot of important detail on him. I mean, I'm not really expecting much. He does have some silver up here, some green eyes, and silver for the rest of the face. It seems like he has jaggedy teeth. If that's what they were going for, I can't really tell. The rest of the paint applications, he has silver up here, some more silver down here, some metallic gun gray on the arms, and the rest of him is just that orange-brown color. He has a very skinny torso section. This figure looks like a jumbled mess and very unesthetic. In terms of articulation, this arm can rotate forward and back and uh yeah that's it i hate how these figures are molded in a way that teases you that they have an elbow joint but neither of these figures have an elbow bend which is kind of annoying the head on this one can't even move so that's great yeah i don't know what else to say 
This next one is Star Leader and Optimus Prime bootleg. I remember being kind of angry about this one because the figure itself seemed really nice, except it broke in the box. And this right here is the Bayway Star Leader, and it's pretty bad. Star Leader, more like Star Don't Buy This Figure. First, let's take a look at the packaging. You got plastic where you can see Optimus there, and you might be able to see what's wrong with the figure through it. Now, the box art itself, not too bad. You get some nice artwork of Optimus here. This is a Bayway product, and no Transformers bootleg is complete without having the words deformation on there. Just like how no video of mine is complete without you leaving a like below. Back you got more artwork of Optimus, or should I say Star Leader? My name is Star Leader TW1022. Now let's open it up so you can actually see what's wrong with this figure. You see, it came broken. As soon as I tried to remove this figure from the packaging, the arm was already broken. And here's a closer look at that right there. It's broken pretty bad, which is unfortunate because the rest of the figure feels pretty solid. Honestly, this is not a bad looking figure and I really wish it wasn't broken. But after reading some of the comments on my post and looking at the figure online, it does seem like this figure has a lot of problems, which is unfortunate because like I said, it's a pretty good looking figure and the feet here are die cast and you can really feel the weight difference there. And this is how it is out of the box. So that's how we're gonna to review it. So if you're like, oh, there's there's this stuff in place that it should, the, this, the back isn't right. There's pieces in places that aren't. Fuck off. Just kidding. I love you. This figure came broken. I don't care anymore. Like it looks really nice. So I'm very disappointed that it came broken. It's like opening a box of chocolates, but instead of chocolate being inside, it's depression. And make sure to subscribe for my declining sanity. So we're just going to review as it is, as it came out of the box. I no longer care. This is a bootleg, so it doesn't really matter. Now this figure is a knockoff of the Studio Series option. Optimus Primes. Now I think the colors on this are much better than the Studio Series version. This version also has clear windows right over here. While Studio Series 44 does not, but Studio Series 32 does have clear windows also. I wish I had them to compare it to, but they're kind of pricey right now. Honestly, probably worth it after seeing this figure. Wait, hold on. What? Hello? Are you high? I mean, that price is, but are you? Also, why does it think I'm in Canada? That's because this video is brought to you by North- Just kidding, no one's sponsoring me yet. So if you want to take pity on me, subscribe to my Patreon, which is only one dollar a month. Now minus the arm, let's take a closer look at the actual figure. The head sculpt on Optimus isn't bad looking. In fact, it's a really good head sculpt worthy of a little smooch. There is a good amount of detail on there and the silver looks really nice. And he even has blue eyes. The smokestacks are a nice silver as well. The chest area and abdomen look pretty good. There's some nice detail over there. The crotch piece also has some detail and you got a nice gold over there. You got some nice mechanical detail on the arms right over here. You got a little bit of gold right over there. Here's a look at the back of the head sculpt. You got some more detail on the top of the figure right there. These are nice silver over here as well. The flames on it look great. There are a few nub marks all over the figure. There's some right here as well, as well as on the back of the leg right over here. Same over here, some nub marks there. The legs have some nice detail on them as well. I'm not too fond of the color of the thighs right over here. There's a closer look at the detail on the front of the legs. And here's a closer look at the feet that are die cast. And like I said, you can really feel the weight on them. And from what it seems, these are the only thing that are die cast on this figure. Overall, this figure feels pretty solid. Now considering how easily it broke, I'm kind of concerned about the rest of the figure. And honestly, I haven't transformed this yet or messed around with the articulation because I'm afraid of breaking it even more. So we're going to do that together. Like stepbrother and stepsister. But before we do that, let's move on to the accessories that it comes with. It comes with two swords that aren't in the packaging. They're kind of just thrown in the box. These are meant to be put on like that. Kind of a tight fit, but it goes on there pretty well. A closer look at it. I really like the orange on it and the silver paintwork. All the little details on there. It's even got that symbol on there. It also comes with two swords that it can hold upright. These also have great orange and silver on them. Here is a comparison of the two. Not really much of a difference there besides the handles. He also comes with replacement chest pieces. And they have a little bit of detail on there. So you can take that off. And here's a closer look at the details inside there. And you can put these on. This abdomen piece is supposed to be from Studio Series 32 Revenge of the Fallen Optimus. And I'll throw a picture of that right over here. And as you can see, there is a bit of a difference. It doesn't look entirely accurate. While this chest piece is supposed to be from Studio Series 44 Dark of the Moon. It also comes with another head right over here. A very sad looking head. And this is the one without the mouth guard. Here's a closer look at them side by side. Let's see if we can replace the head without breaking anything. There we go. Okay, that was fairly easy. And inside you can see the blue there. That's for his eyes. So I noticed I'm not able to get it in. It looks like I broke off this piece on the top of the head. Right over here on this one it's still on while on this one it's broken off. So it looks like I won't be able to replace the headpiece. And it looks like I did the thing I was afraid to do. Unlike the other thing I'm afraid to do which is talk to women. Now let's go through the articulation. It looks like the head can move up and down. It is on a ball joint and it can spin around and you can move them side to side. These little pieces right here can move. The arms can go out that far and they can spin around on the biceps and it looks like the arms can spin all the way around 
elbow bend right over there. It only goes 90 degrees. The hands can spin all the way around. This little flap can come out for the transformation. These chest pieces out here can move. The waist can spin around. These little knee pads can move. The legs can come out like that and they can move forward right there and you can also bring them back like that. There is rotation right over here. The feet can pivot left to right and they can move up and back. Honestly, I'm really upset that this figure came broken because the colors on this and the sculpting and the molding is really good. I mean, the mold is the same as a studio series, which is why it's really good. But I really do like the blues on here. They look great. A lot of the silver paintwork looks great. So I'm very disappointed that it came broken. But hey, now it looks like it's Optimus when he loses his arm from Dark of the Moon. Yeah, I'm stealing that joke from you guys. So I haven't transformed this figure yet. I like to transform them at least once before I transform them on camera. It's just that this figure is so bad. If anything happens, I want to capture it on camera. So I will concede we should probably make this look right. And that right there is why I didn't really want to fiddle with the figure too much to make it look accurate. And now I can't really get this to fit back into place properly. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Now can we get this one to go in like that without breaking it? Okay, it looks like it can. And tab these into place. And that is actually how the back is supposed to be. I, I, I don't really like it. It's very bulky. Also, these are supposed to be up. And these need to be brought down. And the same on this side over here. Hopefully there's nothing else I'm missing. If I am, I, I don't care. We are well beyond being accurate at this point. Yeah, we're just gonna have to transform this without having this on there. If I sound defeated, that's because I am. This figure has broken me. I'm gonna be watching a video on how to transform this while I film this video. So if anything else breaks, I'll catch it on camera. I'll also link that video in the description below. But first, I'm gonna go take a shit and then I'll come back. So first bring these out and then bring the hand down like that. So you can bring this in. Now do the exact same thing with this arm. Now untab both of the arms over here. Now untab this and move it out of the way so you can bring these out. So these need to be out like this right now. And then bring this out and down. Rotate this over. Now we open the chest piece. Untab this. And bring it out. Now on the back here, bring these pieces out on both sides right over here. And then bring these pieces out. Then you need to awkwardly bring this piece over so you can align it with this one right over here. Same for the other side right over here. And then these wheels go in right over here. And then bring this wheel down here for now. Once again, do the exact same thing on the other side. Now it looks like these feet come up right over there like that. Bring this foot up as well. Rotate the waist 180 degrees right there. Untap the chest from the legs right over here. This head needs to flip in there like that. And then this piece goes in here. Same here. Now you want to take this piece and bring it out so you can align it right over here. Get that in there. Now we just need to get this top part in to form the front of the truck. We'll align this up as well. Now we can attach these two front pieces together right over here. Now let's flip this over right over here and then these pieces become the side of the truck right over here. Let's bring this up so we can adjust it a little bit and get it all right in there. These need to be at the back. Now bring this back piece down and align it up. Make sure everything's in place. Now bring this wheel up. Same here. So let's adjust all this right here. And hey, it doesn't look too bad. From this side. From this side, it looks absolutely awful. Now, I do like how the front chair looks. It does have a nice silver. You got the Autobot list Autobot logo right there. And from this side, it does look pretty good. I will give it that. You can see some nub marks right over there. This part here feels empty and it feels like there should be something covering it up. And on the back, you can clearly tell these are his feet, obviously. And once again, there's some more nub and stress marks there and over here. The wheels don't feel too cheap on this one. Here's a look at the underside. The transformation on this felt a bit complex, but that's more of an issue for the Studio Series version. And oh, let's fix that. There we go. And honestly, there's not much to say about the vehicle mode here. I mean, it's a straight up knockoff, so it's going to look pretty much like the Studio Series version. Let's see if we can somehow get these pieces on here. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Also, it looks like it's flaking everywhere. You might notice I haven't put in everything in properly. I, that's because if you haven't been able to tell, I don't really care. Now, most of the pieces on here do tap together improperly. This right here has a nub mark here, which I think might be affecting its ability to go in. And this isn't going in all the way. Honestly, in vehicle mode, it doesn't look too bad. I don't know what to do with this figure. I can either try to fix it so I can display it in robot mode, or I could just leave it in vehicle mode here because it doesn't look too bad. But overall, this figure was kind of a disappointment because it looked really good and it felt really well built except for the fact that it wasn't okay i lied it looks like some pieces don't really want to stay in properly
Now that was fun to watch, wasn't it? Or it was cringe. Now I also have this really shitty bootleg Transformers watch. At the front, it literally says robot watch and he has a tramp stamp. The head sculpt on him isn't too bad. He's got blue and silver paint. It doesn't turn on anymore because the batteries have died. And it is way too small to fit in my wrist, but that's okay because this is not meant for adults. And if I recall correctly, to transform it, we just bring these arms out to the side, rotate them down and flip them over. Same with this one. Now we can get these hands out. This one as well. Separate the legs. He's got... <laughs> Flip that over and bring out the feet. And this thing looks... My hands aren't working. And this thing looks pretty bad. The design isn't very cohesive. With the way the figures are designed and the feet, there's no way it's going to stand. He's got some designs on the back, nothing too special. For articulation, the head cannot move. This can hinge. This can also move. Bicep rotation. Legs can move forward and back. No knee bend. This moves as part of the transformation. And yeah, this is pretty bad. This one is a knockoff Bumblebee figure. It, it's bad. This Bumblebee figure has the worst design ever. This figure is supposed to be an oversized knockoff of the Hot Soldier's big yellow bee. And if I'm being honest, that figure doesn't look too great either. Also, thank you to these people in the comments for letting me know what the original figure was. Now first, let's start off by taking a look at the head of the figure. If you compare the head sculpt to the original figure, you'll see that it looks nothing like it at all. This isn't the right head for the figure. The original figure is supposed to have a G1 looking head, while this one has a Bayverse movie looking head. And the head itself doesn't look too bad. It does have that G symbol there, similar to the Optimus Prime Superman figure. And with some expert analysis, I can safely say that these two figures are probably from the same company. But let's get back to taking a closer look at the head again. It's not a bad head sculpt minus a G, and I do like the silver paint on it. He has green eyes, and the mold of the face is actually pretty good for a Bayverse design. Here's a look at the back of the head. You got some extra molded detail. I could 3D print a proper G1 head for this figure, but honestly, the whole design of the figure is so bad, I don't think it's worth it. I don't know why they chose to go with this head sculpt over a more G1 head sculpt. Maybe because this was just something they had lying around. But the mismatch of this head sculpt with the rest of the figure is so bad. The head sculpt is just way more mechanical and it really just clashes with the rest of the figure. And if we go down here, we'll notice that the paint matching on this is absolutely excellent. That's a joke, by the way. And this part is actually die cast metal, which I'm not sure why they would do that. I think it would look much better if this was just a plastic piece instead of die cast metal. If they chose to just do it in the same plastic, then the colors would match. There really is no point in having this be die cast. But if you do open it up, you can see some extra details on the inside there and over here. Overall though, the entire upper body area is just, it, it's really bad. It's very bulky and it just doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. The original figure was trying to mimic that G1 look, but that didn't really succeed in that. But then again, this isn't a review of that figure, so I can't really be critical of it. You do get some nice metallic blues for the windows around the figure, but this piece back here is a completely different color of blue. Down to the arms, pretty basic stuff here. Now these part of the arms are backwards. So there's the front part of that arm, and this part should be facing the other way around. So I'm not sure how they messed that up. Not too much going on with the hands, they look pretty basic. They do have a simple just G1 blocky design. If we move on down to the crotch piece, we can move this up. It's basically just a simple piece with some silver paint on it. The legs look very simple and the feet are basically just the front of the car. And if we look inside, oh, oops. If we look inside the legs, there is a little bit of molded detail. And with the way the legs are designed with the wheels touching the ground, the figure can't really stand. So you kind of have to have his legs spread open a little bit. Underneath, not too much going on. Now for the back of this figure. I think this figure does something really good with the back that not even the Masterpiece figures can get right. Now the back of the Masterpiece Bumblebee figures don't look the best because of all the stuff they have going on back there. The way this figure negates that issue is actually pretty smart. The back is entirely hollow. This is one of the ugliest things I've seen. Hey, you finally awake. Basically, the arms and the legs just fold into the back for the vehicle mode, which we'll get to later. In fact, this figure has a lot of hollow points on it. As you can see, the arms over here are hollow, and then the backwards piece is hollow. These bits right here are hollow as well. And there's not much else to say about the rest of the back of the figure. This figure is just really not that good. Here's another knockoff Bumblebee figure that I have. And if you do take a closer look at the heads, you can see they're very different in design. Neither of them are the greatest, in my opinion, but they're not that bad. Now, this figure does come with one accessory. It's this. I do believe this is essentially Starscream's Nullray. I did try to look online to see exactly which version of Starscream's Nullray this was, but I couldn't really figure it out, and I could be wrong about it too, as a fake Transformers fan would be. So if I am wrong, uh, leave a comment down below. And for comparison, this Superman figure does come with a weapon that is Starscream's Nullray. And here, if you want to take a closer look at that, the figure can easily hold the weapon, so at least it's doing something right. And you know, I haven't checked if these were 5mm compatible. Let me see. Okay, so here's Legacy Star Saber. 
And yes, it does seem like it is 5mm compatible. The figure's one saving grace. Now for the articulation on this figure, the head can move down like that. It's not on a ball joint or anything, so you just get a full 360 rotation. These arms here can move back and forward for the transformation. And the shoulder pieces are connected via ball joint. So you can bring them out and you can spin them all the way around. The elbows are also connected on a ball joint. So you can bring them back all the way and forward and spin them around. The hands are molded in place so they have no movement. There is no waist movement. You can bring it backwards. This flap can move out. The legs can move out to the side. The legs can move forward about that much. And they can move back quite a bit. There's a 90 degree knee bend and there's a knee bend the other way. And the feet are able to move back and forth. Here is next to the Superman Optimus, some other Bumblebee bootlegs, some official Bumblebee figures. Here it is next to a third party sort of Bumblebee figure. If you're wondering how this is Bumblebee, make sure to go watch that review. Now, just like being an adult, this doesn't come with any instructions. However, unlike being an adult, it is very easy to figure out. First, we're going to open this and then we can bring this out while bringing the head down then we can bring in these arm pieces and then fold them in backwards like that and then make sure just to get everything in place and now this piece is supposed to line up with the arms so let's go ahead and get that in there it can be a little tricky to get it to fit in properly and once you get it to line up make sure this is in place properly now we can close this top piece now for this let's bring the legs out so that way we can fold this in backwards same with this one just fold it in backwards bring the legs down but make sure the waist doesn't come down with it bring this flap up so that way we can bring the legs up and in like that and make sure it just fits into place same over here and then these two pieces are supposed to tab into each other so go ahead and just bring it up and bring it into place and make sure everything just lines up properly and this piece doesn't really stay flat all the way there is a gap in between that I just can't seem to get rid of. And here is the vehicle mode on this figure and the vehicle mode doesn't look as bad as the robot mode. You might have some problem with pieces tabbing into place all the way but it doesn't really matter because this figure is garbage. On the original figure these were yellow but on this figure the area isn't painted so it's black instead. You do have a nice mold for the front of the car and a little bit of details on the back. You can see this is where the back lights would be and the tailpipe. Back over to the front you have some silver headlights and silver for the bumper. You can see some of the extra lights at the top side of the figure. You you do have a door handle, some silver paint for the rims of the wheels. There is this really ugly hinge on the back and with the way the figure is designed it can't really roll very well because there's not enough space at the bottom where the robot pieces fold in. While the vehicle mode on this figure is pretty good the robot mode is pretty trash. Now these are my opinions on this particular knockoff and not the hot soldiers figure because I can't really critique something I don't own except that wheeljack figure that looks horrendous. However this particular figure that I do own is horrible and I do not recommend it. That was pretty cringe wasn't it? Here is cliff jumper probably. Uh, uh, future Mecha Z here, that is incorrect. This is Sideswipe. Imagine getting the names of Transformers wrong. Couldn't be me. Fire 119. Quality check 01. I doubt that. It looks like he has some Chinese lettering. I don't know what that says. Probably fire. Some nice car detail at the back. Some more lettering on the other side that I can't make out. Because I cannot read it. The vehicle mode on this does look kind of cool. It is very brick and block like. It looks better than the others. Black windshield here. These are see-through. So I'm assuming to transform this one, I think it's just bring the legs around and bring that to <laughs> <laughs> you get a menacing T-pose. Bring the arms down. The face sculpt on this figure is uh, it's very elongated and mopey. His hair kind of reminds me of Johnny Bravo a little bit. No head rotation. It's just molded on. This arm can move out and you can rotate it. That's about the only other articulation you get. I do like the color of the red and gold for the blades. The rest of the sculpt work on the figure looks uh, not the best. He's very hollow on these sides and that really doesn't look good. He's got the nine on there. That's the second number in 69. Back of the figure looks absolutely terrible. This piece keeps wanting to pop up. That's that's annoying. This one is a bootleg of the Robot Masters Optimus Prime. And this one I enjoyed the little isekai bit I did for Optimus Prime. And then I had my friend who's an OnlyFans model do a voiceover in this video. This figure looks ugly. You don't deserve to call me mommy. This is a bootleg Optimus Prime. More specifically, a bootleg of the Robot Masters G1 Convoy. This figure really doesn't look too great. <laughs> Holy f is that the Imperial City in the province of Cyrodiil from Elder Scrolls in the year 433 of the Third Era during the Oblivion Crisis? Now here is the Hatsune Miku figure. And even the packaging looks very bootleggy. It looks like they used the movie logo. And I like how it just says G1 over here. And this picture is definitely not this figure. They also do have an Ultra Magnus version of this figure. The side pretty basic. The other side just has Ultra Magnus. And just some stats and instructions at the bottom. And the back of this, oh, the back of this looks very, very bootleggy. Leggy. And I'm not sure what Encore is. That could be the company that makes this figure. Now let's open it up. 
This box is just very cheap also. Now I do like how the trailer has the Transformers logo upside down on this side. It's right on this side. Oh, it's backwards on this side. I don't know why they have the second half of the text first. That's so funny. Here is Optimus Prime in his vehicle mode. We'll get back to him. He comes with this weapon. You get his axe and an ion blaster and a piece of hair over there. Here's a look at Optimus Prime and uh, it doesn't look very good. His head is just sticking out at the top right there. Uh, let's see if we can... Oh, f uh oh. That never happened. So the head is sticking out like that. It can't be turned around. The entire vehicle mode on this doesn't seem like it's done very well. There's like this big gap over here and this can't really be moved or pushed back or anything. I don't understand why these parts of the legs are red. It makes the figure look extra bootleggy. The smokestacks are white. It looks like there is a bit of panel working going on. The front of the truck, pretty basic. You got the lights at the top, blue windows, some windshield wipers, the grill, the front headlights, and then the bumper, which is blue. He does have the fuel tanks. And then the whole back section looks fairly all right for a bootleg. You can obviously tell these are the Feet, but that's kind of like that with a lot of Optimus figures. Also, the instructions for transforming this are so tiny and they're not even good. Like, it doesn't really explain what to do very well. And it also looks like it's saying the axe is supposed to be a replacement part for the hand, but this has a handle on it, making it seem like it's meant to just be held. I would also like to be held. Before we get to transforming this, let's go back to the trailer. Like I said earlier, the upside down text. The rest of the trailer, though, doesn't look too bad, honestly. I really wish this text wasn't there. There might be a way to get rid of it. If you do know, leave a comment down below. But in the end, I think I'm probably just going to get rid of these bootlegs by maybe giving them to another Transformers reviewer or just selling them off. The trailer does look very nice and it has a lot of nice detail on it. The connection for the trailer is super tiny, but it does work. The trailer doesn't have a stand, so it can't really stand on its own. This part of the trailer, you can see some of the detail. You can also open this and bring it down. It doesn't come with roller or anything inside. This panel can be taken off for whatever reason. And then I don't know what this all is. Here's a quick look at the bottom of the trailer. Very basic stuff. The wheels on this figure though are very cheap and you can't open the trailer like you can with other Optimus figures. You could store the accessories in here which is nice and speaking of accessories let's get to wow that was loud and speaking of accessories let's get to those. He does come with a missile launcher. You should be able to fire this if you push down on this but it doesn't work and this is like really tight in there it does not want to come out. Oh there we go and here's a closer look at that blast effect piece and then the rest of this looks fairly basic not much to it. There's some stains on these white parts which is kind of gross. Let's see if I can get this to fire. Oh, I did. Okay, so it does fire. You just have to make sure it's not pushed in all the way. Here's a closer look at its ion blaster. Not a whole lot of detail, and it is the color blue instead of black. And here's the Energon Axe, which is also very basic, and this is red instead of orange. Now, the transformation on this figure is super basic. I didn't even look at the instructions when I first transformed this. You just bring the head up, and then bring these arms out to the side. They can be a little bit tight. Rotate the hands forward, separate the legs, bring the feet out, bring up the chest piece, so that way you can bring down these pieces, which is easier to push from the the top and then that way you can grab them and bring them out to the side and before you close that rotate the leg around uh pretend that didn't happen keep rotating the leg please rotate the body all the way around. We can put these back on. And there is the figure and it looks very bad. If you're wondering how he sizes with other figures, here he is next to a bunch of other unlicensed Optimus Prime figures I own. He's just a bit taller than the KBB Optimus. And here he is next to some official Optimus Prime figures. And by the way, speaking of Optimus Prime figures, I have a really big review coming up so make sure to subscribe for that. And here he is next to a bootleg hot rod and the optional attack girl. For the articulation on this figure, he can only look up and down because of the transformation. If you couldn't tell from earlier, there is no rotation on the head. These arms are on a ball joint so you can bring them out and then you can spin them around. They're a bit tight. Looks like there's some bicep rotation. As you saw earlier, there is waist rotation but it's very, very tight. And then the legs also on a ball joint so you can bring them out. And if you bring them into the side, it kind of pushes that in. You can also, <laughs> oh, whoops. You can bring them back around there before this gets in the way. This part does not want to come out. There we go. There's a knee bend and there seems to be a bit of an inwards knee bend. And for the feet, they can just move back and forth. I feel like the proportions on this figure are pretty bad, especially this entire area right here. The waist section is very small to me and he has some massive thunder thighs. Now let's see if he can actually hold his weapons. We'll put the ion blaster in his left hand and this in his right hand. Okay. And it does look like he can hold them and the grip on those is pretty good. I will say though that these hands are a bit loose. And for this, there is no way for him to hold it. 
Now I don't really like the color of red they used. It's either that or it might be because these parts of the legs are also red, which kind of throws everything off from Optimus Prime's look. The crotch piece should also be gray instead of blue. You could maybe paint this to get something good out of it, but I just don't think it's worth it. It's gonna go back in the box and it doesn't even belong in a jar. The head sculpt isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. The eyes aren't painted, so it looks like he doesn't have them at all, but I promise you they are there. He does have that silver forehead piece and the silver mouthpiece. Here's a look at the sides and the back, down onto the chest piece. These parts don't really want to stay out. The entire upper body piece looks very ugly. All the colors just clash a whole lot with this figure. Also, the paint job of the windshield isn't really done the best. You can see some of the silver underneath it. The arms and the hands are hollow. The rest of the arms, not a whole lot going to them. Looks like there's some detail at the back of the arms at the bottom and over here around the biceps. The hands are just simple and blocky. He has some of those shapes on the arms. The crotch piece is two colors of blue. And then you have these blue bits on the side. The mold of the legs look really bad in my opinion. And they're hollow on the sides. It looks like there is a bit of detail on the inside of the legs and a little bit on this side. But other than that, not a whole lot to this. He does resemble Optimus Prime, just not well. This figure is kind of ugly. I don't really like the color pattern on it and it just doesn't look too good. Thank you to my friend Gemini for voicing in this video if you want to hear that one more time. You don't deserve to call me mommy. Make sure to give her a follow on Instagram and her OnlyFans. What a cool video. Now let's look at this Bumblebee figure. Uh, he's got that logo up there at the front again. Uh, he did not come in very pristine condition. I do like how the windows are a nice shiny blue. He's got some black lining throughout him. The exhaust pipe section at the back is sticking out a lot. These figures don't really stay put well together. This is also a very boxy looking car. That is kind of how the original design is, so there's not much I can say there. And to transform this one, I'm assuming, let's see, uh, figuring this out on the spot. Oh boy, I'm looking very incompetent on camera. Oh, there we go, I did it. Let's bring that up. Uh, the face doesn't look like Bumblebee. That's definitely more of a Cliff Jumper looking face. I know it is Bumblebee's face. It just screams Cliff Jumper to me for some reason. Uh, his chest piece is very big. In terms of articulation, no head movement, arm can move out, and yeah, that's it. This back piece doesn't want to stay down all the way, which is kind of annoying. Quality check five, don't think so. If we go back to the vehicle mode, I just noticed. So he's got four wheels on the side, but back in the robot mode, he has some full wheels over here. Overall, not very good. Well, wow, that was fun. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, and check out other videos. If you're still here for some reason, comment uh, goose below. Thank you.